Welcome everybody. Glad you could be here. Hope the time. Glad you could be here today. How's it going, everyone? My name is uh, Jimmy Walmsley. I'm a technical recruiter at Eliasson Group. Uh, I just want to thank PMI for having us today. Um, just to give you a little overview of Eliasson Group, we actually are celebrating 30 years this year. Um, we primarily focus in IT consulting. Um, a lot of the work that we really like to focus on is more contract-based work. If you're looking to kind of dive into more project management and business analyst work, that's really what my team focuses on. Um, Recently, over the last 10 years, we've dove into our new life sciences department, and we've actually been able to outreach over 22 offices now from coast to coast. Um, a lot of the work that we actually started doing in the last seven years, we actually developed an agile program, which has been a great transformation, especially for project managers that we were working with that wanted to try and dive into something new. And so it's been a great process. You know, I've been very happy and fortunate to be here and work you know, closely with a big team. And um, you know, our booth is right over there. So if you do have any more questions or if you're really looking to kind of get into you know, project management or learn a little bit more about Agile Consulting, uh, you know, we do have an advisory team. We have training and coaching. So you know, feel free to come by and stop by and uh, ask any questions. And um, you know, I'll be happy to talk to you. So thank you very much. This back? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, a uh, little heads up, folks. We're uh, having a technical difficulty here with the uh, with the screen, and that's fine. But um, we're going to have to be we're going to kind of be working on it as we speak. Um, I will have that presentation up in a moment. Strategy execution. Read this book. 
some of the elements of strategy execution. Why? Because project management is wonderful, but the truth is that the why are we doing that piece of yesterday, this morning, yesterday, this morning, what's that? This morning's presentation, the why are we doing this? That's the piece we're missing. There is a huge gap in corporate America, corporate Canada, corporate world. Why? Between the work that project managers are doing and the strategic plan. And that gap is the one that I'm trying to address through discussions and keynotes with organizations and mostly leadership presentations and short workshops. And then, of course, you get to you sit back and think, okay, David, that, that's kind of good. That's all organizational strategy execution. But we keep talking about our careers. Isn't it logical that we extend that conversation to us? And that's why we're here this morning. Thanks for joining I want to encourage you to think strategically about your careers. And I want to help you. This is a workshop. This is a hands-on. Let's get your down and dirty. Let's get your notepads out and let's start talking. Because there's potential that there's going to be no, no slideshow. <laughs> the truth is, like my slideshow this morning, they're not a lot of, there's not a lot of detail anyway, so it's not like you're going to miss much. But if it does happen, you're going to get the slideshow immediately afterwards. I'll email it. We'll email it to you. We'll take care of it. By the way, Diane or Diana? My apologies. Where are you? Diana. Diana? Yeah. Some other there's a lot of noise behind that here. <laughs> Diana wants me to announce it. If you've had trouble checking into this session, we'll see her afterwards, wave, say hi, volunteer. Thank you, Diana. Um, to make sure you're connected with the session, get your PDFs. Whatever those are. So why? Why is this so critical? This is actually three legs of strategy. Your organization, your career, and your life. The third one I want to spend most of the time on because that's the most fun. But the second one I think we really have to spend time on because that's why we're here. The first one, well, we can't really do a breakout on the strategic plan of the organization, but we can think and use the organizational piece as the mold or as the discussion around what is strategy, how do you create a strategic plan, how do you think strategically, and then once we've sort of thought around the corporate side, let's then take it to our careers and then let's take it to our lives. Let's do two breakouts, two workshops, one on our career, one on our lives, where let's talk about the corporate piece because it's boring and we can learn from that and move on. Would that be all right? <laughs> It's hard talking about strategy when you talk about your organization. David, I'm, you know, they're, they're, they're the ones that set strategy. It might be for a not-for-profit, you're working as a volunteer, they've got a strategic plan. Every organization on the face of this earth that's going to survive beyond three years currently has a strategic plan. I just made that up. <laughs> but it sounds pretty logical, doesn't it? It's the only way they're going to survive. What does the strategic plan say? Not what is it, how do you build it, but what does it say about you? What's the message to an organization, a charitable organization down the road, working with street kids, small business that you and your brother-in-law are running, a small business doing $5 million a year over the internet, medium-sized business doing or $100 million a year. I'm not sure why they did that medium sized business. A large corporation. I'll be working with next week down in Mississippi doing $4 billion for the federal government. What does a good, solid strategic plan say? This is what we're about and we have a plan. This is what we're about and we have a plan. Who cares? That's a great message. This is what we're about and we have a plan. And from the back corner, who cares? Who's the audience? Customers. Stakeholders. Customers. Stakeholders can be a bunch of everybody. Employees. Employees care, don't they? Do you want to be working for a rudderless ship? Do you want to be working for an organization? You talk about the 5, 10, 15 year plan, David. Do you want to be working for an organization that has a plan that keeps changing their mind every 5, 3, 2 years? I want to be working for an organization that knows where they're headed. We have a plan. We know what we're doing. 
What else does a strategic plan say? I don't. You're going to be able to keep people employed. And? How we're going to grow. So this is how we are going to grow. Therefore, my message to my employees is, look, this is us. Sounds like a good television show. <laughs> Although I, Karen and I ditched on the second season. Should I? Should we have ditched? <laughs> okay, quick tangent. First of all, that would happen. The movie was released or the new show was released? Mm -hmm. The movie was released. A great show last night on. I caught just the last bit of it. But then I'm watching a show. It's a review of the fourth season of The Good Life. Has anyone followed The Good Life? I called Karen and said, Good Life, four seasons. We kind of start watching it. It's brilliant. It's about the afterlife. They went and ranked everyone in the world about the good deeds and the good things you did, and they took the top piece and they actually made you live in a whole new world where swearing wasn't allowed and you have to be nice. It's kind of fun. It's light and simple and soft way. Karen and I like it. So, where were we? So what? What does the strategic plan say? Why are we? Say it again. Why are we? Why are we doing this? So it sends a message to our people, our stakeholders, our employees, our customers. What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Where are we heading in three to five years? Ten years. I worked with an organization with a 35-year plan. They were in the hydroelectric business. They had to. It was required. But they also had that three-year strategic plan as well. We've got two plans. Oh, God, here we go. But it made total sense once I realized I was working with A strategic plan sends a huge message to everyone involved, especially employees, because you have options these days. You are employable. But Barrett over there, a Canadian boy, said, well, i got to start thinking about how to get the message out and how to brand me and how to grow me and how to be better me and how to think about the future. But given all that, I want to keep you. Ideally, I don't want to have to replace you. So a good strategic plan, I'm hoping, sends a message to you that says, don't worry, we've got you. Don't worry, we're going to grow. We're going to give you options for growth, for professional success. A strategic plan says a whole bunch of things. But here's the rub, folks. Forbes.com recently suggested that about 60 to 65% of strategic plans that are built each year, what am I about to say? Fail. Or, that's what, fail or don't even get off starting. Some way, shape, or form they fail. We've spent hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars since the 60s building strategic plans. In the 50s, we didn't. Life was too simple. Organizations didn't build strategic plans. Strategy wasn't an issue. Change wasn't an issue. We manufactured a bunch of iron and steel, and we shipped it on boats to the ground of the world. Life was simple. There was no technology. We weren't building massive cities. There wasn't a lot of that going on. There were big, large capital projects here and there. Honestly, we didn't do that. Except for one group. What group lived and breathed strategy? in the 50s and before. One industry. No. Who? No. How about military? It was too simple. You're brilliant. It just, it really is looking good. Say when and all, and all, F7. So, Military got this. Military certainly understood it. But in the 50s, 60s, that was it. But then things started to change. We got to the 80s and 90s. Boston Group, um, Harvard, a number of others. Consulting companies started to talk strategic planning within organizations. And it was brand new and a lot of, Ugh? we should be planning the future. Things aren't going to be all like it is. Stelco and Vasco and a whole bunch of other major corporations, Steel Company of America. Nope, it's not going to be the same. So we spent many, 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 many years, billions of dollars building strategic plans. Here we are in 2000 or whatever it is now, 
And guess what we're discovering? That really don't work unless you pay attention, unless you actually think about it after the build, unless you actually think about the execution of the plan, because the plan is not going to work unless you build an execution environment, unless you build a culture around your plan that says, we're going to get this done. We as project managers go, yeah, duh. But I can tell you, leadership doesn't get it. Senior leadership doesn't get it. Certainly at the board level, executive level, level, many will just say, let's build it, and that's all we need to do. And they go back to work, or they ignore it. They say, that's beneath me. I need to give everyone else to execute. They don't pay attention. So there's a bunch of reasons. And my friend Mo and I wrote this book, The Seven Elements of Strategy and Execution. There was a copy of it that we're going to give away for a prize draw later today. So not only is it building the plan, but it's executing the plan. Do not go away today without talking about the execution of strategy. It's the critical piece. But let's build strategy first. Let's talk about the first leg. This is the organizational piece. This is corporate ABC. This is not-for-profit. X, Y, Z. Everyone know the Canadian? That's X, Y, Z. That's what we say. X, Y, Z. We say X, Y, Z. We say A sometimes. Would you have heard me say A once today? <laughs> what, give me one other Canadianism. Process. What's wrong with process? Process or process? Is it process? I say process. Oh, you think it's process? No, I say process. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and something about roof. I don't know what it is on the roof over your head, but apparently we say that one. Strategy. It's simple. Strategic planning 101. You ready for your course? Here we go. Strategic planning and strategy. Strategy is let's send a message out. This is what we're doing. Strategic planning is a different ballgame. Strategic planning is the process of building the widget, the widget being the plan. Got it? We can talk and we should just quick hit the hit, hit quick, hit, quick, hit, quick, quick, quickly hit the idea of how to build the plan. But let's talk about the plan first. Really, really simple. How many people here have been in the strategic planning process ever? If you, then you'll know the answers. There are three elements to every strategic plan. Only three that are absolutely critical. And from there, everything falls into place. Element number one. What is it? Give me one of the three elements. Every strategic plan has a binder. The binder is beautiful. It's got a panel in the front with a logo. It says, wait, action, action 2020 or something like that. In it, there are three tabs. Actually, there are five, possibly. There's an executive summary. There's tab, tab, tab. And there's conclusion. What are the three tabs? And inside the tab is huge, I get it. It's huge, it's this thing. Three tabs are, one? Where we've been. Say it again. Where we've been. Where we have been. Also known as, different words? The state? Current state? What was the word you were thinking? I said past, because that's what you said. Where yeah, the past. Where we've been, the current state. It is one tab. It is historical, but it really is current state. Because the truth is that as a strategic planner, I'm not too sure I care about the past as much unless it gives me signals about where we are today. Don't go forward. Let's not do the dreaming. Forget the stickies on the wall for the moment. Forget tomorrow. All I want to do is talk about today. It is called the current state. And I will tell you that in my opinion, most strategic plans fail. There are many, many, many reasons. But one of the seven elements, one of the seven is because it was poorly built. Why was it poorly built? What was the critical element that was missing? Current state. Why? It's really logical, folks. It's logical that the current state is missing because, as a CEO, I've just been hired. What we always do, us leaders, is we want to put our stamp in this organization fast. Do you not agree? As an entrepreneur building a new business, we want to move to the future fast. We want change, we want it personalized, we want to move, go, go, go. And so what we do is we move to the future immediately. And we just start to build. And that is wrong. Because this current state analysis is critical to your success. If you don't get where you're coming from, 
if you don't get the what am I, who are we answer, then how can you plan the future? Come back to it in a moment to detail that as, for, as an organizational one, as, as an organizational plan. The second element, current state, now it becomes easier. What's the second tab? Vision for the future. The future state. Vision for the future. Okay, here we go. Let's start talking about the future. So I have been a professional speaker half my life for the last seven years. I run Project Management Education, nine universities, a master's certificate in Project Management in Canada for the other half of my life. This business of professional speaking has been in my brain. He fell off the stage and he tripped on a cord that was taped down. <laughs> What an idiot. <laughs> Dad, really? <laughs> Don't tell my kids. <clears throat> I had this in my bonnet, this be in my bonnet, 25 years ago. I knew that I would be a professional speaker at the end of my career. And not, there's going to be no end. I'm either going to drop off the stage and kill myself, or drop dead in the middle of a speech. I'm happy with that. As long as you get me home already. Right. So there's no retirement, there's no end, but I knew that when I turned, I would become. <laughs> so my business, I had a conference business. Project World, um, Project Summit in Boston, anyone ever attend? I started that in my basement, 1997. We launched in Toronto, then went to five other cities, went to Boston. Our first event in Boston, Project Summit, was election night, and who was the local candidate? Eight. We're, we're, we're off now, it was probably Kerry was it was Kerry who was the local candidate. He lost the next day. I lost my luggage. Had to run this event in Boston. We were in the downtown big conference center, the humongous conference center down Heinz Center, Center, the Heinz Center. Walking down the street the night before, wondering if I'll ever get my luggage, if I'll have a suit to wear the next day, which I didn't. And I'm hearing this beautiful music, and it's James Taylor live, one block over, practicing for the setup for the next night. Sold the business. I'm going, okay, I'm going to be a professional speaker. Going, so, what is it going to take for me to be there? That was the future state. In order to become a professional speaker, are you going to be able to do this and this? No, you have to sell one. But you don't own it. You just work for all those universities. So, keep it. Sell that. You start to put the pieces in place. That future state doesn't have to be crystal clear, but it needs to have some kind of frame around it. Some people worry that they don't know enough, so how could they start talking about the future? I didn't have a clue what I would be talking about. I didn't have a clue how I would market it, how I would sell it, what the content would be. I didn't have a clue in it. It just said, David Baird, professional speaker. And the future state started to take shape. It took me 15 to 18 years to then execute. Because then I did a whole bunch of things that would help me get from the current state to the future state. And that's your third tab. How am I going to get there? Right? Today, tomorrow, how am I going to get from here to be? Three tabs, three pieces to a strategic plan. Failure comes immediately if you don't deal with that future state, the current state. Failure is pretty typical because you don't deal with the current state, because you're so anxious to put the stickies on the wall and dream about all the conferences you run, or dream about all the new products, or talk about all the new companies you'll buy and acquire, or talk about the growth of a certain sector in your business and how your organization is going to deal with it. Ah, Lee, it's so fun. Let's do it. Uh, no, we're going to spend two days on our current state analysis. I want to see a whole bunch of pieces in that tab. I want to see some tabs on the following. Whoa, boring. I mean, that's what happens. Because that is exciting. This is boring. And that's the problem. Dealing with the current state is going to kill you because it's really boring. But you've got to do it. Let's talk about the current state. You are a small profit, not for profit. You're your own business. You're a large corporation. What information will I find in your current state analysis? Give it to me. What is the information that I'm going to see that I need to see in a solid two day long effort to create current state analysis of your company? 
Financial information, the whole picture. Current balance sheet, balance sheets, P and Ls, cash flow, ROI, broken by division. This is us. <laughs> this is us, not the past. Just show me your current state. Here. What else? Did it again. Products. What do you make? What do you do? Next. Clients. Who do you work for? Who do you sell to? <coughs> Next. Employees and skill sets. What about your resources? Under resources, we have employees and we have financials and we have assets and we have a whole bunch of things. So resources, but most especially our people. Our people are so important. We're in the service industry. This is what we do. We are strong here. We've got a couple of weak points here. We've got a couple of gaps there. This is our employee profile. What else? Market share. Market share. How much of our market? Which then takes me to? Not necessarily, but the competitive analysis. Our market share, and as a result, we've got 60%. Who's got the other 40? What do we know about them? Where are they going? Who are your competitors? Then to industry trends. industry trends, what's happening. It is current state, and currently our industry is trending towards. It's not future state. The future state is all about me. This is current state, but the future of our industry is a critical tab in this analysis. God, this is getting boring, isn't it? <laughs> yes. The other thing is like corporate assets, even like patents, for example, if you're a pharmaceutical. Absolutely, your pharmaceutical, your current state of all your patents, and the age of your patents, and the years they will come to expiration. Pfizer, anyone work for Pfizer? Work for Pfizer, knows Pfizer? My sister-in-law and brother-in-law both were scientists with Pfizer working in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Great story, quick one minute. They're sitting around Sunday night. She says, he says, hey, what's up for tomorrow? And he said, uh, Oh, I got a meeting at 10 a.m. I'm sure it's for someone put a meeting in my in my diary, in my calendar. And she said, oh, isn't that funny? Because I got one too. Oh well. So they get to work and all of a sudden, okay folks, let's go. 10 a.m. You're in there, and other departments, you're here, other buildings of people. 17, 20, 21,000 people in one plant, Pfizer and Ann Arbor. 10 a.m. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this plan is now closed. <laughs> patents. Coming off patent in three years, they just closed the whole thing. You're all out of work. Sorry. There's a, oh, sorry. There's a package on all of your desks. So at 10 a.m., they gather 21,000 people together in boardrooms, in arenas, in any place they could find, and orchestrated to the minute. Of course, if they didn't, what would have happened to the real estate industry in Ann Arbor, Michigan? <laughs> Which would mean the antenna went fell underneath, fell completely to bits. By the way, I did this speech, I was talking about something else, I'm talking about that. I've got a workshop I do called From a Good Project Manager to a Great Leader, how do I get there? I'm doing this in, uh, in uh, Ann Arbor. And I realized, I'm in Ann Arbor, this is Pfizer land. And I'm telling the story because we do a session on, uh, on decision making. <laughs> Of course, half the room related to the people who were in that, those rooms that day. They all knew. I said, so what's, what's the current state of that place? And they said that it's now an electric car facility owned by one of the manufacturers, one of the big names. So. And they're all back to work, and the, and the housing industry is all back to normal, but um, quick pitch. So there are a whole ton of stuff. There's an organization that's got to go in your current state. There's one other acronym that you didn't tell me that you didn't give to me in the current state analysis. And I missed it, and I'm not sure why it's not in this book, in this beautiful binder of this fine stuff of 2020 vision. And it is your SWOT analysis. Thank you, sir. And that SWOT analysis stands for? Strengths. Strengths. What do we do really, really well? Given all of this, thanks. Actually, it's well time because we now know of our resources and our patterns and our people and our financial status, we know everything about us. This is a good picture. As a result of all that, where are our strengths? 
We're 80% of the marketplace. We've got fabulous people. We've got a CEO lined up three deep to take over. We've got our future leadership position set. This is all good stuff. These are our strengths. I need to see them clearly. And if you think I'm really kind of going deep on this, did I tell you that after this, we're going to talk about your careers and then we're going to talk about your life. We're going to need enough time for you to actually take pen to paper and build a current state analysis for you and your career and your life. And then we're going to go to your future state. And then each one of you is going to stand up and present the whole group. <laughs> no. We're going to do as much as we can at the time of But it's important you get this foundation. Regardless of it's a corporation, a non profit your own company, your business, your life, Karen and I have our own life plan. We have our own strategic plan. Yes. Shouldn't culture, organizational culture, be part of it? I'm so glad that when you read it, you, you found that we were missing. So we all were called back into a room and we had to find a whole new tab on corporate culture. Of course, I'm not sure what corporate culture is, so we're going to bring a specialist in there and study the business of the now. But yes, current state, give me a little bit of your take on corporate culture. Who is the best person to write that section? The CEO? No. Who? How are you going to write that section of the, of the strategic plan? Of the current state? Within tab two. That one being the executive summary. I don't know the answer to that one. Maybe a committee of people? Maybe you bring people from all over and put them together and give them three hours to come up with a definition of our corporate culture? Good, bad, and ugly, please? Good idea, actually. So, the SWOT analysis, our strengths, and here comes the hard part, our weaknesses, suck it up, give them to me. Tell me where you are really weak. And so that's easy, David, I get that, we're gonna say that we have trouble doing this, our customer service is a little weak, we've got knocked on the surveys, we get hit, hit on this and that, the cars don't work, the phones don't always connect, I can hope the business here. That's easy. So here comes the hard part. I've always found this really hard, and I'm going to talk for you because, of, because I'm going to avoid you trying to admit to it. But what do I mean by strengths, opportunities, smart, smart, weaknesses, opportunities? What are opportunities? And if we find no, that's a trade Just can anyone take a dive back and take a step at defining opportunities? How do I go and write opportunities now? I always found this. I sold my business actually to a company in Native. Native, Native. And they go with the third way. You said it's your strategic plan. I'm like, what strategic plan? I'm running this business out of my basement. I don't know a strategic plan. <laughs> what are opportunities? I always had difficulty. I got to the second. I didn't know what I had to do. And here's how I did it. Logic. Not that I'm totally logical. Take your strengths. List them all down. 15 of them. Take a line beside each one. And say to yourself, as a result of what opportunities do I have? Because if every strength, dream, think about it. therefore, what opportunities might be out there for us as an organization. Because we have a very strong financial status, a very strong balance sheet, what are the opportunities? Forget the plan. We're not going to future yet. Let's just state the current state. The current state has nothing to do with where you want to go. The current state is, because of these strengths, there are opportunities that lie there that are lying out in front of you as an organization. It's tricky thinking, but you've got to think that way. List your strengths and show me the opportunities. Because of a strong balance sheet, well, we could acquire, we could grow fast, we could, you could do a whole bunch of cool things with money. Money buys a lot of stuff. With a really, really strong research and innovation department, ah, we could create new products, we could develop a whole new product line. These are the opportunities because of each of the strengths you listed. Strengths deliver opportunities. And that's how you do it. Take it from me, it's completely logical. If you approach it any other way, you're going to sit there and stare at the paper like I did. And if you think of opportunities that have nothing to do with your strengths, truthfully, it's written there because of your strength in some way. So, we're going to And logically, what are the threats? Where do I get threats to my business? 
Say again. Some of the weaknesses. List each weakness. We're broke. Which produces 15 threats to your business. I'm going to be out of business. I'm going to get acquired. People are going to leave. Disaster, disaster, disaster. For each weakness, you could list at least one, if not two, or more threats to your business. Does that make sense? This is just SWOT analysis, and every current state needs a SWOT analysis. Every current state isn't just a SWOT analysis. Many people think that's all it is, it's just a SWOT analysis. It's not. The current state is a full analysis of all those beautiful pieces that we put together. Boring, I know. But how brilliant. Because when was the last time you were forced to actually dig deep and do a full analysis? Okay, enough, David. That's your corporation. Whoa, wait a second. Tab three was? How am I going to get there? I now have a very clear picture of the current state. Now I have a clear picture of, oh no, I'm not even on the future state yet. Now the future state. Okay. So we did that. Sorry, I got a little. We have the future state on the wall. David wants to be a professional speaker in 15 to 18 years. There it is. It can be clear as a bell or not. So the future state is that picture, and as you progress, it could be, be foggy or it could be clear as a bell. Working with a, a, a bank recently, who back 15 years ago were famous in Canada for having a real problem with their business. They were number five in the business, and there are only five major charter banks in Canada. They were number five in customer service. They suck. Their branch system was awful. They were number one, though, in investment income. They wanted to swap it. They wouldn't mind the resume from staying there, but they wanted to become one or two. They could see the future. We are number two in the industry, number one in the industry of customer service. They could see it. That was their future state. That's all right. Clear as bell. This is us. This is our balance sheet. Third piece of the puzzle. How am I going to get there? How do I go from here to there? What are the options for the bank to become number one in the uh, and number two in the customer service area of banking Canada? Improve, train, go into the trenches, show people what customer service is all about, do that whole inward, inside, internal address. Or you can think of another one. Acquire. Go to the one bank in the industry that was the strongest in customer service. And it worked. And they did. Actually, it wasn't a bank, it was a trust company, but they did. Their hours. Three P suit, you guys see it. Three they went to Milano for 15, 25 years, 20 years ago. Three P suit, their hours, 10 to 3. Do you remember those days? Five days a week, 10 to 3? Hello. Over here, six days a week. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and in some cases staying late till 8 p.m. Open Saturdays. Children not allowed. <laughs> Tables with Lego and kids and balloons and candy and birthday parties. So that future state doesn't have to be crystal clear, but you've got to have something. Now, in that future state analysis with your organization or your business, sometimes. We're going to do an exercise, and you'll get people in that can do it. They can do the whole sticky thing. Throw up, just throw up all the ideas about us in five years. Where do you see us? What are we doing? What are we building? So sometimes we have to build the future state. In some cases, it is handed to us on a silver platter. We are going to, we at the board level have decided to acquire a competitor, probably so now we know the future state. Now we have to figure out how to get from here to there. Not only is it the acquisition, but it's the zero to five year integration as well. It was huge. Okay? That how am I going to get there involves people, it involves time. Well, in fact, it's a simple discussion in this room because it's just a big project on steroids, isn't it? It's a program with a whole bunch of projects inside it if you're going to acquire another bank. They actually have three fourths of a major downtown tower in Toronto, and they call it their PMO. The PMO was open for three years, and three floors 
just project that you can imagine. You did it very well. Two guys ran it. And each section, you could just walk around the tour, um, branded. Letterhead, literature, and other stuff. Whole four IT, of course. Bricks and mortar, the branches, because all this duplication. And it went on and on and on and on. The execution was really, really well done. How am I going to get there? The truth is that strategy execution is simple. Those strategic plans, 60, 65%, shouldn't have failed if they had done what? If they had hired a project manager, but they don't think of that. Because they think project management is a trainable issue and it's down there and it's IT and it's construction and engineering. That's us. We're a company here. This is strategy. It's project management at its best. How could you be so silly? What a great career. Learn strategy and execution. And then start selling you uh, selling yourself as an expert in the execution of strategy. Because slowly, if I have my ways as a keynote speaker for these organizations, pop in their leadership meetings, I can tell you slowly and surely, we will convince leadership that it wasn't strategic planning, but it was the execution of strategy. Are there any questions about strategic planning 101? Three things. Current state, future state, now I'm going to get there. That current state is really important. It's got a small analysis, but it's got a whole bunch more depth. Future state doesn't have to be crystal clear. It's start foggy. We're going to be a keynote speaker. We're going to acquire our partner, our, our other. But just get going. As you move any step and every step forward, it will get clearer and clearer, and you will learn more. So now I'm going to get there. It's simple because you are a project manager. You know how to put it. Use your resources to get it done. You know what planning is all about, but you know, as well as I, that planning is only this much of the deal. It's the execution of the plan. It's controlling the plan. It's updating. It's re-baselining every once in a while. It's change management. It's risk assessment and risk management throughout the life cycle of this massive project, program, or execution strategy. Okay, that's it. Leg number two, your career. And a paper, please. I am now your coach. And you've come to me and said, you know what, I'm kind of stuck, David. I want some help. And I say, well, what's the problem? And you say, well, I don't know really where I'm going. I'm not so happy what I'm doing. And so here's my answer. Where's your strategic plan? Why don't you bring me the strategic plan tomorrow and we'll have a look at it. Huh? Yeah, I want to see a strategic plan. Strategic plan is for organizations. No, 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 no. It's for your career. I want you to start thinking strategically about your career. But I want a plan. Here we go. Your strategic plan for your career has three elements. Five tabs. The first tab is your executive summary. Your second tab is your current state. What are the elements of your current state now when we're talking about your career? I'm going to do this in two minutes, and then I want you to take three to five to kind of just point, 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 give me three to five points in each of these sectors just for fun. Make it up if you can. Think of it right now, but at least we've got something started. Your current state for your career includes what? What are some of the elements of this report? Where are you working? Um, Say again. Salary. How much are you making? What are you doing? Your role, your position. How many years you been doing? How long have you been doing this? Your certifications. Absolute current state. Your specialties. It pretty well your resume, pretty well your LinkedIn profile. Open it up, have a look. There's your current state. That's actually a really good point. Thank you. Just save me three hours. <laughs> it was right there. Why was I reading that? It's all on my LinkedIn profile. What else? 
Your reputation, well, that's interesting. That's current state analysis, isn't it? What do people think of you? Good luck with that one. Maybe you get someone to help you write that. I'm doing a strategic plan on me. Could I buy you guys dinner, three of you, my best buds? And I'd like you to be really honest with me, honest with me and just kind of help me with this. A couple of things I need to ask you about me. Well, you're not my best buds. I'm not going to ask my best buds because that's, that's relationship limiting. You know, your goal with somebody else. Sure, you use other people to do it. Anything else you want in the current state analysis? Your SWAT, your strengths, your weaknesses. As a result of your strengths, what are some of the opportunities that you and I, me as your coach, might look at tomorrow when we meet? Wow, I never thought of that. No, that great. Well, what about, what about, what about, what? So this guy, Derek Sweeney, and I are Project World Toronto, 2,000 people, huge stage, big keynote speaker, you knocked on the shoulder. And this is about the year 2005 or so. That's you. Come on. What are you talking about? He said, you're actually going to be a keynote speaker someday. And I'm going to rep you. By the way, it came true. How of it? He doesn't rep me. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, if you look at your strengths, Dave, you're willing to stand up. I see you. I've seen all these events and kind of weighing in, falling off stages, <laughs> recovering. You're good at that. That's a strength. Not many people could do that. And I go, well, oh, thanks. I actually, I actually love it. Well, that's the other thing. And you love it. So, you can, so that's a strength. As a result of being able to stand in front of public and talk and fall off stages and recover, you could be a keynote speaker. You could do workshops. There's a whole bunch of opportunities that come from those strengths. And that's how it works. You look at your strengths and then you list third opportunities. And you look at your weaknesses and say risks, threats to my career. I hate presenting to a crowd. Threats. You're not going to get promoted. You're not going to get a leadership position. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to, okay, oh, that was rough. So when we come to the future state and we can sort of come to a, a future state and how we're going to get there, if these pieces need to be addressed, we know where to find them. We can look at these issues, these, these threats, and say, look, I love the picture, but. You can't present in front of the people. We've got to get over that. We've got to go to Toastmasters. We've got to get you learning. We've got to get you comfortable. We can do it. Don't worry. We can get you comfortable with them. We're talking to larger people. So your current state for your career is really critical. Your future state, how many people here have an idea of where they want to be in five years? Two. How many people here would love to know where they're going to be in five years? Okay. How many people don't care? How many people actually say, I'm not really that concerned about five-year plan? Anybody over 65 is a good Do We do care. Some of you know now, some of you don't know. I'm hoping after this workshop that you'll start to take notice and think about it. Because what you heard this morning, things are changing, step up, and things you might hear today, it's important. To not move the same pace as that curve of water. Don't let other people dictate your future, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you take control? Don't sit and wait for the phone to ring. Why don't you tell people where you're going rather than have you hear, gee, this is where we like to have. Yeah, I know that's where you want me to go, but the truth is, this is where I want to go. But where'd you get that? Says HR, you know, well, it's part of my strategic plan. You're what? Well, here. Critical component, if I don't forget to say it, I can tell you right now. Small A, agile. My brother and sister law say, how can you and Karen always be so planning? How can you think ahead 5, 10, or even 15 years? Things are going to change. You know what you know? And we go, yeah, I know. That's why we do it. We do it, we know things are going to change. We do it, one of my blog posts, what's plan B? Plan B has got to be there as well. That's another whole session. Plan B because sometimes plan A doesn't work out. If I had fallen off that stage today and hurt myself to the point where I couldn't speak anymore on stage, I sure hope I've got a plan B. And in fact, that I do. It's quite interesting, but yeah, I have a plan B. 
So, where do you want to be? And I don't need it crystal clear, but I do want to think about, want you to think about kind of what the position looks like. It could be within your own organization. It could be I want out of here now, or I'm growing tired. I'm thinking that within three years I'm going to want to change. You know, though, when I do this, it's just kind of fun because this is not working, right? There's no problem get a microphone like this. But I do know that I'm going to want to change. I do know that I'm that kind of person. So five years, it's going to be a different company. Coach said, is it the same industry? Yeah. I see AI coming down the road, and I'm interested. I see robotics. I see blockchain. I see digital transformation. And I'm kind of digging this, and I'm going to stay in this industry, but I'm going to reach out and branch out and be a different type of project manager in five years. Okay, I like that. It's good. It's a plan. Have a plan. And then, of course, these parties have to get in there. Because what I'm going to do as your coach is I'm going to sit there and say, well, if this is where you want to be, this is your SWOT analysis and your current state, your strengths, your weaknesses, your assets. By the way, what are the other assets? Who you know? Anybody? How often have you actually connected with someone? I connected with someone at the airport yesterday and immediately went to her uh, LinkedIn profile to see how many friends we had in common. It was interesting. None. Didn't. That was weird because we didn't know each other. But being, being, a, being a people world, it, it is who you know sometimes. It's who you know, but it's an asset. And if you know people that you can call for coffee and their first connection LinkedIn and you didn't just accept, 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 can you believe people do that? They don't even know when they can accept. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, when you're done, if you go to LinkedIn, by the way, and if, I figured this out just after my session, and if you go to the network piece where the two people are, where you can see who's invited you to connect, there is a little symbol at the bottom right hand corner. It's blue. It's got a little person with a blue plus sign. If you click that, Add contacts, scan QR codes, we do that, or find empty. And it says off, because it defaults off if you click it. Find, it says, says find nearby, you click it. And it's now looking for anybody in this room that has done the same thing. Which will automatically give us a link that allows one or both of us to accept the connection. Uh, can you get there again? <laughs> LinkedIn? Yeah, we're on LinkedIn? Then we're going to go to the to the connections, to the people side, to who I who I connected with. Yeah. Bottom right hand corner is a blue plus sign. Yeah. Nearby, are you Douglas McPherson? Yeah. Thank you, Douglas. He's back. Uh, of course he's back. Uh, he's having the age of something. Uh, Gary, no, I'm not saying any. You guys are accepting me automatically, but there's Gary, there's Kimberly, and there's Victoria, and there's Kevin. And I. <laughs> okay, LinkedIn. You know what? Terrible. Enough! Put that down. <laughs> at, your, at your table, please. Leave LinkedIn alone. I want you to write three things down in this piece of paper. This is my professional strategic plan. Three sections. Current state, future state, and how I'm going to get there. I would like to see three items in each. Current state, future state, and how am I going to get there. Now, how am I going to get there, ladies and gentlemen, is easy. And I'm going to talk to you about courses, connecting with people, lunch and learns, coffee information sessions. I'm going to talk about great. Let's, let's get you there. You want to be a professional speaker? Join NSA, the National Speakers Association. Listen to all the professional speakers and talk to them after how they did it, what their career was all about. Buy them a coffee. Blog. Read blogs for professional speakers. So much we can do. So go ahead. Current state, future state, how many get there? This is the easy one because your life plan is coming in eight, ten minutes. So let's just deal with our, our careers at the moment. Current, future. <coughs> what do you do? Leave that out you make in a moment. What do you do? What do you love about your job at the good current state? Are you happy? Current state. Are you happy? 
Are you professionally healthy? What do you mean by that? Um, you don't lose sleep at night over your job, you like the people you work with, you're professionally challenged, you're growing. We call that, I'm going to vlog on that next week. Professionally healthy. That's good with that. Yes, no, or is it on scale? Good question. So your coach says, well, if it's not an absolute yes, then what's wrong with it? Because they know we talk about the future state, I'm going to say, you know what, they're kind of looking like, you know, we're on the scale of that happiness thing. There's nothing more important than this. Everything else is to the side. Pick for an old man like me. If you're unhappy with what you do, you made a mistake to change it, but if you didn't change it. Current state. Then the future state. What do you want to be? What are you doing? So shouldn't we start in that week start to think about it? Right down all the ideas. It's it's this it goes back to that corporate planning meeting. Okay, folks, we're trying to talk about the next five to ten year plan. Where are we going? We run eight events a year, we have five great products, and we're awesome at it. What's the potential? Now it isn't just pie in the sky, we've got it, we've done our current state, we know how much money we've got. We know our strengths. So we just can't throw junk up there that's impossible to do. We need to go buy our competitor. You know who our competitor is. We can't afford them. Stop it. Let's not, let, let's not dream too big. Let's be reasonable. And so to you, my friend, I would say, so let me see this current state. Let me see your strengths and your weaknesses. Actually, let me go right to the opportunities, because if we really think that out of it, we can maybe develop a pretty dis decent career path. It's unbelievable, but this really is how I think. And it's got me to where I am today. Because someone said, you could be a professional speaker. And way back in the previous, <clears throat> I also knew I wasn't going to be a big corporate guy. I tried it, it was a big bank, and I knew it. I knew that this wasn't me. I wasn't thinking all that strategically. But I did start my first software development business. But I tell my kids, you know, this strategic thinking about your career at 24 years of age, do I want them to listen to me? Yeah. As someone said in our local national newspaper two days ago, stay where you are for five to eight years. Don't move. Come out of school and stay there. Just soak it up. Okay, three to five. Just soak it up. I don't care how happy you are. Now, if you're miserable and you hate me, you make get the heck out of knowledge. But stick with it. Learn. Grow. She's with Pepsi. She's not going to be with Pepsi for 15 to 20 years. She's never complaining. She's doing well. She loves it. It's a great company. What a trainer. Stick around with Christine. Don't move. Stick around. So if you have a plan, and my friend and I are going to have to work on that. If you have the future state, then how are you going to get there? Give me three steps on how you're going to get there. Give me a course, two courses that you could take as a result of that future. Is it a leadership position? Should we be addressing leadership training from one of our sponsors here in the building at the conference? Should we go over there and look at exactly the leadership training at Boston U or one of the other colleges that was ever there? Um, why are you running for PMO? Oh, isn't that interesting? I like that. I'm going to be the director of PMO my organization. Look at your um, weaknesses. I notice that you don't get agile. You, you're one of those people that never, you don't know agile all, do you? Weakness. Threat. You're not going to get the next job that says, gee, we're thinking agile. Check. Find an agile course. Three days. Go for it. Invest. Agile. Leadership. There are other things that your future might need, components, people skills, negotiating skills. Ah, I see. 
So that's where I want to be. And these are the things, the elements that are going to be required in order for me to get there. Here are the pieces that I need. Like it. Sorry to put a plan view. I guess my PowerPoint's not going to work. Was that? <laughs> Courses I can take. People I need to meet. This person, this person. People 25 influencers every year. That's weird. Um, LinkedIn profile should be connected, but that's not, oh, oh, I should go revisit my LinkedIn profile. I should fix that. Action items. Don't let the current take you to where it wants to go. Go into action now. Set up a bit of a plan to get to a future state. The future state, David, I'm not so sure. But just, okay, but kind of, let's, let's build a few parameters around it. Let's just build a box that may not be that strong. We may blow it away pretty quickly. But let's build a box. At least have a plan of some sort. And then we can put some action items together, which gets us moving forward professionally. Because we've got a plan. I took a course. Why? I attended a conference. Why? Because I need my PDUs and I love project management and I need to grow. Bingo. Great answer. I don't know why. Well, that's not a good answer. Because if I look at this plan, why weren't you at an AI conference on the 24th of October downtown Boston? Or why didn't you take a course on this? Why didn't you go to a conference on that? Why didn't you do a networking session on this? Who are you following on blog posts? What podcasts are you listening to? It's interesting. Are there any questions so far? Anyone? Pretty simple stuff, but it's action oriented. You've got to get it going. And true to life, I promise you, Karen and I have a life plan. And I didn't get it then, but it is a strategic plan. Now I don't know. It really is strategy for Karen and I. Not for me, not my profession, it's for our relationship. You see, when Karen and I met about 28 years ago, we both had had a previous marriage. Me, no kids, two years. Her, two kids, four and six. Denver from Toronto, Denver for seven years, and those kids were born in there. And, 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 and both of us on our own for five to seven years. So, quite frankly, and honestly, it, it was time that we got over the, I have to have a partner. Now, we, we both admitted that we kept to that point where I can live like this happily. And then, of course, you know, the moment you say it out loud, you're going to meet your, the love of your life. But we were skiers together. We skied the same ski area in Collingwood, just north of Toronto. And not only that, which is pretty interesting, is my name is in the guest book of her little ski cabin when I was 10 years old. Scary. We met, we fell in love in three days. We danced a storm up and looked into each other's eyes for that first dance one week later at the ski club. It was midwinter. And we looked at that evening, said, 365 days before we get married. Promise? So we promised each other that we would go through all four seasons. We wouldn't rush it. Because we were ready to get married. And so we waited for four seasons and we married 367 days later. And here's the point. Stone broke. I was switching from one business I was putting down to another business that I was dreaming up immediately. Dead up to our my eyeballs. Two kids never been a father. Son stepson, Rob, not really big in the new guy. Dad in Denver promising the world every phone call, of course, so he was God's gift to creation. I mean, everything against us. And really not a clue as to where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. There was no better time for us to sit down strategically and think about how we were going to make this work. We were so God, God in love. It was sickening to say our friends. Still to this day, oh yeah, we remember that time. <laughs> but that wasn't going to conquer any of the mess that we were in. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> Don't tell me. You heard it. You heard it. <laughs> well, what is that? That's Eric's. Eric, I've got your friends. Go 
machines, mentoring, influence, and conflict resolution error. He's probably gonna fly. strategy, about strategic planning, we had no idea that he was 20 years away from 8 years I was going to write a book on strategic and strategy execution. We sat there and said, what's, what's really good about this? What do we have that we should be grateful for? What do we have that is strong, that's good? What do we have between us that are really, that is, that is great? I don't think I have any other way to put it. I want to say assets. And then we said, what's going on? Next methodology communication plan. <laughs> <laughs> and so, where are the risks to this relationship? Where are the problems? And what's going on? Well, you've got a son that can't talk to you. A new stepson you don't know how to deal with. You fight with him all the time. You've got to fix that relationship. I get that. You've got a daughter that just loves you, a new daughter that loves you to death in Europe. And we've got a problem with that because they've got the dad over there, and that's kidding. And we have no money. And we have debt. And we'll, we'll never buy a house. And we're like, all this. And so we really analyzed, truly sat with our life plan and analyzed that current state as best we could without knowing what we were doing. And what we did every time we met, every year we would sit down at a bar, typically with a glass of wine, and we would say, okay, let's do the review. And they were always handwritten on a piece of paper, sometimes on the paper napkin of the bar itself. Because what we would we just be sitting down and drink after dinner. Hey, let's go back to the plan. And I would always have access, and typically we would find the, the previous version. And we'd pull it out, and we said, "Look, it said that within a year you would, and you would, and you would, and you would." So how did we do, baby? No poop, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did you do, Karen? On your action line. And how did we do? We want to get your salary to X. We want to get you provided. Wow, good. Eurasian crop at least improves somehow. Oh, good. You've, we've, we've taken parenting courses. We wanted to take a parenting course. We wanted to uh, save enough money to put a down payment on a house. We wanted to take a trip to Europe. We wanted to start to travel. This isn't stuff you can do when you're completely surrounded with debt and broke. You can only do it if it's out there and that's what your life looks like. One year's time. Within a year, you want to get this relationship in, on, on, in order, and you want to do this, this, this. And within five years, you want to go to Europe or visit Paris and visit London and have another child. The future state started to look a little bit clearer. And that allowed Karen and I to say, if this is the best we're in, and that's the spot we want to be, how are we going to do it? Where are we going to get help? Who are we going to speak to? What are we going to do? To make it happen. At your table, just on your own, no presentations to the crowd afterwards. Do a do life plan for me, would you? Current state. Give me three things that are great about you or your relationship. This can be personal or this can be your relationship. This can be your partnership. Give me three really good things about that are, that are great about your current state. Type faster if you want. But at least three about your current state of you and your wife. Future state. Where do you see yourself three, five, or 10 years? By the way, a key element of every strategic plan has a date on it. It isn't just some time out. It can be the words three to five years, but it has to have a pin somewhere out there. It has to have a date or a pin with one date. By January the 5th, 2025, I will have retired, I will have learned how to golf, I will have learned how to play bridge, we will have sold the house and moved to a condo in downtown Boston, and we will have three grandchildren. <laughs> you can't put that in your plan. You can't put the pressure on. 
but you can, and take it from me, you can learn how to play bridge, and you can learn how to golf at the age of 50. And it's hell, because I still haven't figured it out. 14 years later. Bridge is well worth learning if you want to retire well. It's well worth learning. Does anybody play bridge? It's a great game. But it's really great as a, in, a, in a retirement mode because a lot of old people like me play it. And it's a really good for your brain. Anybody play Euchre? Oh, really? Euchre on steroids. It's, it's a, oh, I don't want to hurt Where are you today? Where do you want to be in X period? Five years, eight years, ten years? And then this is the critical piece because all the planning isn't worth it if you don't say, then how am I going to get there? How am I going to get there? Give me three to five things you can do for your life that will help you reach your, your, your goals. And it can't have anything to do with Rachel. I used to do it, not do it anymore, on, on a strategic relationship management. And thinking about all the people in your life who think it's strategic about where you want to take those relationships and how you want to do it, including get rid of them. House cleaning. Certainly the friends in your life, the special people in your life. I have a brother in law I don't speak to and I haven't speak to in three years. That's current state. Within three to five years, I want a relationship with that brother in law. It's not going to be immediate. You can't go to him and say, or her and say, oh, we're going to be friends now. I'm going to take it all back. It's going to be slow and gradual. It's going to be something I have to work on. As far as I'm concerned, in the hour and a half we spent together, this is the goal. This is the piece that comes out of strategic planning and organizational strategic planning. It's understanding that you can do this for your life. The semi-goal is you can do it for your career. You can think strategic about your career as well. God, you know what? All of a sudden you're in the driver's seat. Part of our plan 25 years ago was to move to that ski area that we actually met at. To have a little cabin and have it for the weekends, and then eventually move there and live out there after. It was always in the plan. And we moved a year and a half ago. Sold the house, moved to a condo in Toronto area, and hated it, and moved up, put an addition on, it's our home. It's awesome. We had a dog named Marley, a little Bichon. Part of the strategic plan was to get rid of the fourth child, because we had two on our own. By the way, strategy. The strategic plan said one child together. Which we had. Her name's Christine. She worked at Pepsi. She's now 27 years old. But we then, ah, child. We then realized, oops, small man, child. Plan B. Oops, we realized that the gap between her and the youngest of her kids, which was Jackie, Rob and Jackie, 37, 34 ish. I had got a clue how old my children are. Whoops, that gap's too big. When she, when he leaves and goes off to school, she's on her own for the whole high school year. It's critical for having an older brother and older sister, isn't it? Ooh. So we have another one. <laughs> so we had another child, and so we now have two. And so 27 and 24. It's worked out really well. So we had this dog, boss of Martin, Bichon. So we said, okay, you're gonna love this story. So we decided to have Christy and her two kids, and then we said, we're gonna get this dog, and when the dog is 13 and typically dies, the dogs die at 13 or so, it would take a few years, we're gonna have our last child out the door. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move to this spot, sell our house, move to this spot, and Andrea will go off to school, the moment she goes to school, the dog's gonna die, and we're gonna go live out later after dark. <laughs> How old is the dog now? She has a door now. 
and then everybody went off to school. The trouble is, we actually took advantage of the really juicy housing market in Toronto when we sold it a little early, and Andrew's going, what happened to me? We said, well, darling, your home is now two hours north of Toronto. She's at university, and we sold under her feet. She had no house to come back to. Can't win them all. Strategies changed, plans changed. But we did buy the house, we moved up a little early, a few years earlier than planned. Andrea was in school when we did it, she wasn't quite gone yet, so her bedroom moved, and the dog was dead. And we didn't have any ever after. <laughs> Change up. Oh my god, Pepsi girl comes home and lives with us. And she's got a job close by, and we're like, whoa, that must have been the plan. Of course, it never is, right? And another daughter separated with a baby in her arms, so she came home for a while a few years before that, and that must have been the plan. And then we got another dog. Pepsi girl says, I think we should get a dog, Rubies. So the <laughs> three of us decided to get a stupid dog. Bichon Poodle Cross. Guess what we call him? Austin. <laughs> Not after you. After a Boston whaler. We have two little Boston whalers in We would not be together today if it hadn't been for our strategic thinking about the relationship. We wouldn't be together today if we hadn't sought some help because we had some tough times. I mean, there are a whole bunch of really good news about our relationship. But the truth is, I know it sounds silly, but we thought strategically about it. My brother and sister-in-law, they laugh at us. And people do love to win. And I'm not denying that that's not a bad thing to do, but man, where are you today? Where do you want to be tomorrow? And how do you get there? Things can happen. And how do you get there can be fun stuff. This is, going to be, this is what we're doing, this is where we are, it's where we want to Here are the five cities we want to visit the world before it's too late. Here are the ten couples in our lives we want to get a little closer to. Here's the score of the golf game we want to get to. <laughs> Not all serious. Um, our relationship is good and strong, darling, so good, yeah. Um, we want to sell the house eventually and move to where? Where are we going to move to? All of a sudden there's a plan. The great part about planning organizations is that we have something that works. I say to not-for-profits and charitable organizations, careful, I'm a board chair of one of the not-for-profits in my town now. And the problem is you get board members that walk on, you know, I, who come in and then big storm and go, great, we're going to move my way. We're going to change everything. And the strength of having a plan is to say, Excuse me, we have a plan. You can't just change everything. Come on board, work with us. We will review the plan. We have a strategic plan. We have an operational plan as well. And you just can't come in and change everything because you think you're God's gift to whatever. So it protects you as well. And the purpose of saying that is that if you have a life plan, it also protects if you have a career plan, it really protects you because the phone rings and gets some calls. HR, and they say, hi, David. We've got a fabulous opportunity for you in Denver, Colorado. Woohoo! Uh, get back to you on that one. I just got to go revisit the plan because that wasn't part of it. And so at least I've got something that my, I, myself on my own or my family or partner can go back to and say, this is what we drafted of. This is what we said. We've got a curve, we've got a torpedo from the side, do we want to take it? And the great part about planning is that you've got, a door, you've got something to push against, to compare, to, to evaluate, to say, is this going to work? Rather than, wow, Denver, that's so good, of course I'll go. And six months later, you're wondering, Denver, why are you there? Or where this is taking you? It helps us stop the knee-jerk reaction of saying yes to a whole bunch of stuff. And on a life plan, it helps us because all of a sudden one of us says, whoa, let's sell the house, it's a great market. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sell the house 2022 or so. Why did we say that? What was the core to that decision? Do you remember the discussion? Yeah, but it's such a great market, sell! It'll be better in 2022. Calm down, we have a plan. It's only three years, though. You guys go further now. 2028. It's been a pleasure, folks. I hope you picked up, uh, I know I'm ranting. 
three areas that we can think strategically. It's our organizations, and you are the new board, uh, chair of the board of the home for street kids around the corner, or the unwed moms, or the, the, the adults disabilities, with uh, mental disabilities, whatever you're doing that's giving back, or the PMI chapter. You need a strategic plan. And if you're going to run the show, you need to know how to build it. You don't have to build it. You can hire someone to come in and build it for you. But you need to know, like every good project manager, you need to know what's possible. So get this. Bring someone in. Ask them. What's your style? What's your process? And if you don't hear the word current state analysis, you can't get rid of them. Because a lot of them just go to the future. So you should know how to build and what is possible. And when you think about your careers, stop letting other people drive the boat, the bus, the car, whatever good it is. You take control now. And when they want to drive it, they call about the driver, just get something to say, okay, I'm going to think about this, because I'm going to go back to the reasons why I put somebody else down. It wasn't, you know what? It says we are not movable. We're not mobile. We want to stay in Boston proper. Our kids are happy, we've got great friends. There are reasons we said it in our current state or in our future state. It's in the Boston area. I know it sounds good, but just say no. And life, life is crazy. And it's gonna throw you zingers all the time. And you should be in control. And it helps just to sit down every year and say, how are we doing? How are you doing? Hope you enjoyed this, it's 11.30. And uh, I'll take a couple of questions if you wish, and, and we're done. Anyone? Any? Any questions? Do you, uh, important question. Important. Do you have a change management plan for your life? Yes, you do. Do I have a change? It's a really good question. Do I have a change management plan for my life plan? No. I'm not that good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be a while. If I, if I really seriously injure myself, that was our thing. I don't really, I do have a plan to be on that one. Yes, sorry. Uh, life. Life. What could happen that could so dramatically change my life? Man, we were walking down a block three days ago and we saw Ingrid. Ingrid lost a half of one leg and a half of a, a full foot four years ago. She's got twins and a husband who's not that healthy who just died three weeks ago. She said, it's like a two by four across the side of my head. I had no idea ten years ago that any of this would happen. Then I could throw you some real sick. Do I have a change management plan? No. I mean, if something like that happens, if I lost Karen, if Karen lost me, I'm just, yeah, you could be so prepared, right? And there's so many things that can happen. But, uh, no. I'm not terrible answer that question. <laughs> 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 you have to adapt it because you're employed, not by choice, but, you know. So how do you adapt this if you're unemployed, not by choice? You have a current state, you have a very, very definite. This is a free major. This this is a great, I mean, as your coach, who are you? Where are your strengths and weaknesses? And what have you done in the past? And where's your history look like? And who do you know? There's such a wonderful opportunity to team to really spend some time to get to know you, you getting to know you through a professional help for yourself and your friends. Because the more you get that, maybe all of a sudden the light bulbs can go on. Because the more we can dig down, we can even find the nugget that says, Whoa, have you thought about being a coach. Have you thought about going into the sector? Right. Look. Look at these strengths. They fit beautifully into these opportunities. And we had quite a fun time dreaming about those opportunities. That had nothing to do with you in your future. But look, actually, professional speaking, coaching, childcare, thinking in, thinking in, thinking in, there are a whole bunch of things you do. It's absolutely about you. More than many, most people in this room, it's absolutely about you. And it's so beautiful. Find a coach, find a mentor, find someone to help you walk through this part of your life. Because you can't do it on your own. Okay? There are some people out there that love you, that also really respect you, and are strong enough in that respect to be honest and blunt with you as well. You want that kind of person. And, uh, this is a project. Okay? Three years from now, it's gone. You know, this is pretty good or something. Thanks, time. Anybody else? For who? 
you were there. Yeah. So there's the cold calls, the cold emails, and then you get people who do agree to a copy. How do you make those, those cold calls, emails, and the actual getting together enjoyable from start to finish? You make the objective absolutely clear as a bell. The question was these, these copies, these informational sessions I tell my kids you have to do. It's hard doing it as a cold call. Hard thing. I don't know you from Adam. Can I have a coffee with you? But you can try that. But the people you know, or you know someone who knew you that recommended you. Uh, clear objectives, clear timing. Can I have half an hour of your time for a coffee in your building? So it's 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 easy for them because they just have to step up and go on their feet. Right? It's just a coffee, it's never lunch, it's a half an hour, not a full hour. And they can extend it the hour. Oh, I'll give you the hour if you wish. If they would, if they're very busy, they don't. So if they see it clearly, then they're not going to get trapped. It's close by, it's half an hour long, it's above. Now, the objective, I want you to do two things. I want to pick your brain about you and your industry. I'd like to know more about your industry, and I'd love to hear about your journey. Full stop. <laughs> Make it clear, understand where they're headed, because I have no screen here, so I'm not sure what's going on. Um, well, I might as well show you. Um, okay. Oh, we'll play this. Okay, here you are here in 15 seconds. Uh, welcome, everyone. So what? That's what we're going to do. Street Plan 101. Street Plan, current state, future state, where you get from. Work, Whoops. work, your professional, and life. Why did strategy fail? Because it didn't follow up, because it didn't pay attention, because it didn't put in your calendar, let's meet about the life plan six months from now. They failed because you didn't put it in your calendar that one year from today, you're going to meet with yourself or your coach or your mentor to review your progress. Thank you, everyone. Look ahead, create a vision, look plan, execute the plan, be ready, readjust, keep on executing. I did a fair job, didn't I? Yeah. Agility, don't worry, things change. Have a plan B. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What you're expecting from me, and go to the ego. I want to find out about you and the, the industry, and I want to find out about you and your journey. Go to their ego. I have no problem talking about my journey. I'll go up in three hours. <laughs> I'm not looking for a job. Absolutely key. Okay? And then you get the meeting, you get the coffee, and you say thank you very much. Here we go. Are you ready? Is there anyone who you might be able to connect me with going? Done a good job, the answer will be yes. Here are the three names, I'll follow up soon. If you haven't done a good job, or the or the chemistry wasn't right there, they'll say, hey, let me think about it. I'll get back to you. And you'll never hear from them again. <laughs> Fair? Okay, folks. Lunch time. Did. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be around for a little while. My flight's not until 7 o'clock, so I'm here all day. <laughs> Although I'm hearing I shouldn't be trying to get them. To, to Logan at like 4 this afternoon. Leave it free? 2? 3. 3.30? I'm not listening to you, I was thinking of 2. Thank you everyone, hope you enjoy.